Hi everyone, hope you're all the boo. Um, we're out in the field today, giving this a good old test, and hopefully you'll be pretty impressed with it. Let's have a look outside. So you see, the beauty of this is, even though the door's shut and the window's shut, you can still hopefully hear me. And that is one of the beauties of having a wireless lav mic. And then you can go out and about, and not have to worry about getting all that audio and everything correct. And then you match it up in post. Anyway, we're gonna get down in the field and give these uh, new ones a good old test. It's the Comica ones. It's uh, these ones here, yeah? Gonna give them a good old test and see whether or not they're worthwhile buying if you're interested in some. Later on as well, we will also test some of the wireless Go ones and um, from Rode and give them a good old blast as well. Let's roll that intro. So what did you think of that then? I've received these microphones, the Comica Boom XDs. They're wireless ones to give them a good old review. And I'm gonna announce another giveaway today, so make sure you stay tuned. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. Now then, I already own the Rode Wireless Go mics. And I've been really impressed with them. So let's see how these compete against them. And after the initial test, I may do a comparison between them. So if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you have any questions, do the same. Okay, we'll do a quick unboxing in a second, and then we'll get out and test it in the field. First of all, as always, here's today's uninteresting fact. How about this one for commitment? In 2007, a bloke called Jeremy Harper in Birmingham, Alabama, not UK, counted to one million live on a webcam. And you know, it took him 89 days. He did it for approximately 16 hours a day, averaging around 11,200 numbers a day. Now that's 89 days of his life he's never ever going to get back. But it does give a different meaning to daily vlogging, doesn't it? So as you all know, I don't go into the tech side of things. If you want that, you can read it up yourself. There'll be a link down below to find out more. And there'll be loads of other people on YouTube who go through all the tech stuff. But to be honest with you, I find them pretty boring. And remember, if you fancy buying one, there'll also be a link down there as well. Now you should know by now, I always give fully unbiased real life reviews. And although companies send me gear to review, I'm not paid in any way, shape or form, not sponsored by them. Um, and they have sent me this one free with no strings attached. So here's a little bit about the mics before we get into the unboxing. Looking on the outside of the box, it seems like they come with everything you need to plug and play. And they claim that this will help you produce professional broadcasting video and audio recording. And how I got that in one go, I don't know. Um, you can judge this for yourself though, because when we get out, we'll give it a real life test. And what I won't be doing is any post audio editing. It'll be raw straight out the camera. Now they're 2.4 G digital wireless global free frequency. You can switch between mono and stereo on there. And there is a monitor on both units so you can see if they're working well. In fact, I've got one at the moment. And they also claim that they work up to 50 meters. They've got clips on them that fit straight into the hot shoe on your cameras or in your pocket or on your belt. I made a mistake. They stay on the box, they can transmit up to 50 meters, but I forgot that when I went out and tested them, thinking they only went up to 30 meters, but you'll get the gist of it. Now let's see what's in that box. All right, let's have a look at what's in the box then. So this one's nicely packaged. Oh, nice little opener up there. You get the two receiver in here, nicely tightly fitted. You feel really good quality actually. Um, better than the wireless go ones from road they feel like they've got metal casing on them themselves yeah they are so that's the transmitter and the receiver what else do we get in the box let's have a look inside oh andy sunny must be a parent company we also get the little instruction book which i'll have a look at later on before we get out and test it in the field <laughs> looks like you've got an apple phone doesn't it um, that's got to be of some use on these, I would imagine. Yeah, it's for the reset buttons, I would have thought. Take it as one on each of them. Yeah, there is. Also inside, nice little package here. It's bound to have all the cables in it, isn't it? Yeah. So there we go. There are little cables in there. Get these boxes out of the way. Let's see what we've got. We have got USB-C for the charging. One of those. Oh, there's, there's the old microphone there. 
And these will be the cables I'm sure to connect them up to the camera. God, these packages are tough, ain't they? So there's one there. Various different ones, I'm sure these will be um, for different setups for cameras or for phones and so on and so forth. Yes, yeah, so that's the Canon one. I like how they label them up. That's the smartphone. That's for the Canon and Nikon, etc. So I bet you it's a different one for the Sony. <laughs> Why is Sony always different? Oh, I, yep, there you go. Sony, Panasonic and Fuji ones. So I like the fact that they label them up because it makes it easy to work out which one you're going to need and which ones you chuck away. And this looks like it's going to be some sort of wind muff, I would imagine. Yes, it is. Oh, I'll tell you what. They put some thought into this. It's all stitched. I don't know if you can see that in there. Yeah, let's put it on this camera. So it's all stitched all around here. It's got a nice little rubber casing. And I would imagine, get rid of that, that slots straight over the edge of there. How good's that? That's really good. But I'm looking forward to using this outside. So that, if you're just using this by itself then and clipped on, that's going to be really good use for it, for if it's windy when you're out and about. So there we go. Pretty good kit by the looks of it and the face of it anyway. Um, I'm going to need all of them anyway, so we'll use the Canon one there, get rid of these two. I'm not going to try it on the smartphone or anything like that because that's not my bag. We'll need that. And we'll probably need to give them a good old charge before we go. And we'll also get the lav mic on because there's some um, little top tips I can give you for when you're out and about doing vlogging and why you might want to use this type of mic rather than the traditional shotgun mic. So let's get it on the camera. So as you can see, these are really small and neat. To be honest with you, I think when people are out vlogging, these are probably do a better job than the shotgun mics. But I'm going to do some videos on comparing these with the Rode Wireless Goes, uh, the Rode Video Mic Plus, and also without the camera on at all in different scenarios down the beach while you're driving around in a car, out in the field, and just doing some all around genuine vlogging. So if you're interested in those, you know what to do. Right, let's get these on the camera then. As you can see, the actual units themselves are very small in comparison to the camera. This is the EOS RP for size differences and things like that. Um, what you do with it is you just push it straight onto the hot shoe. If you are interested as well, I will be doing some comparison videos on these against um, things like the shotgun mics because it's my belief that this is better for vlogging actually especially if you can hide this unit somewhere then it's not as um, conspicuous as when you've got a great big furry cat on the top of here, here we go. <laughs> anyway that one gets plugged in on there on the output okay and straight in here on the old mic setting then with the actual mics themselves i've got the lav ear here i mean that would just plug straight in here the good thing as well i don't know if you can see this you know right when you plug them in, there's a little lock mechanism that actually goes in to save it pulling out, which is absolutely awesome, to be honest with you. And then you just unclick it like that, and it pulls out. But we'll test that when we're out in the field as well. But the unit itself is there. All right, you just switch them on by pressing and holding that button. And on the top, you see the comma could come up, showing full battery and also the settings that it's on. Um, the settings themselves, I'm sure you'll do that to your own taste. I'll set them up myself before I go out, but then you can see what they're like. Um, and then the unit itself as well. Okay. Switch them on. Should see that all fire up on there as well. And already you can see that that is working. And if we turn this one around as well, hopefully you will see both of them working away. And if I go down here and just lift this one up close to my mouth, you can see it coming through on the decibels there. This is for a second receiver as well, or the receiver itself, sorry, will allow you to have two units on here. So you can actually be very good for doing things like um, interviews or if you're vlogging with someone else. Anyway, that's enough of the setups. Pretty simple, straightforward and easy. Um, the charging points are on the side here. Like I said, they're USB-C. They're both very exactly the same. Don't know what the reset button's for. It's probably if you muck it all up, I ain't going to bother touching that. We'll get out in the field now and give it a good old try. Okay, as you can see, not bad. There's everything in there that you need to get up and running. Let's get out in the field and give it that real life test then. 
Right, so one of the first tests I always do with microphones is use them in the car. Now, I know you shouldn't be vlogging and things like that in the car, and I always do it in a really safe manner. And like here today, I'm out in the field, so this isn't um, public property, it's private land, so there's no way in any way, shape or form, apart from the birds that keep landing in front of me, that I'm gonna harm anybody. So this test here, we will put on the aircon in a minute and we'll put the radio on as well and see where we go from there and give it a good old blast. So first of all, let's whack the old aircon on because it is a bit hot here today. Probably sweating away. Um, it'll probably go on a full blast. Yeah, there we go. So that's the aircon on. Now I don't know if you can hear it or not over this. And if you can, obviously you probably wouldn't have it on full blast. So let's turn it down a little bit put it to a comfortable level and hopefully you can hear me all right now. The other thing as well, let's put the radio on just in case you've got it playing in the background. Now this is set at 12, which is the level I normally have when I'm driving. So I don't know if you can hear me or not and I won't know until we get back in the um, studio to give it a good old test. And what I'm also not gonna do is do any post editing of the audio on there. I might have to do some of the uh, color grading because that looks a little bit dark to me, but we shall see when we get back. So that's it for now on this test. Hopefully you've got a good idea of it. What I'll do though, first of all, actually, is do the old ABC test. Turn that one down. Right, we're going to go down this straight here. May even get to see some more light then. Um, so ABC, one, two, three. Hopefully you can hear me. And that is pretty tickety-boo. Let's see when we get back in the studio. We'll get and do the old uh, distance test now. See you in a sec. Right, we're going to get the old distance test done now. Now, each of these wooden posts, I know, are six metres between each other. So every two I'll go is going to be 12 metres, four will be, what, 24? And then the fifth one should be 30 metres. I'm going to go on to about 40 metres and see if it still works then. Um, but don't worry, you don't have to see me tread all the way down there. I'll just cut it in between. So let's get down to, oh, where should we go first? We'll go to the, mm, let's go 12 metres, shall we? See you in a sec. We're now about 12 metres away from it, so ABC, one, two, three. Hopefully you can hear me. Let's get down to the next one. So this here is about 24 metres. Hopefully you can hear me as well. So ABC, one, two, three. Can you hear me? I don't know until I get back to the studio, do I? Let's go to the one more post, which will be the first metre mark. So this now is 30 metres away from the camera. Hopefully you can hear it. Um, and if you can, it means it's past the test because that's what they claim on there. But what we're going to do, since we've got a clear sight of vision here, there's no obstacles and everything else, we'll go down one more and maybe two more. And then that means that we'll go up to, what, 42 metres and see whether they're up there as well. This is um, set at 36 metres. Next one. And this here should be 42 metres. So if that's worked, Comic has claimed to be 30 metres, it's actually exceeded that. Um, but what we do now, actually, just thought one of the horses was coming over. What we do now is we will get back and give it the old vlogging test. So when you're out vlogging, one of the biggest problems you ever probably have is the fact that you look like this. Yeah? And people are saying, what the hell are they up to? But you will end up with a great big furry cat on there normally. And the difference with this one is the fact that it looks less conspicuous. Um, and also, hopefully, you could play this down and then wander off and get a different shot of you, I don't know, doing something in the car and things like that, and not have to worry about, um, worry, I thought they're there, Jonathan Ross sound there, worry about um, getting the mic off, setting it up a different camera angle and things like that. You could have it all going and make it more natural, really, I suppose. Anyway, that's it for this one. What I'm gonna do now is unplug the lav mic and see what it's like with it set up on here. See you in a sec. Right, so we've set it up on here. Um, you probably wouldn't wanna walk around with it on there, would you? But if you've got a jacket on, it's too hot for one today. Um, what you'd be able to do is have it clipped inside the jacket and things like that, and hopefully you'll hear what this sounds like. The other thing as well is that if you forgot to bring a lav mic, you know you can still use it. And if you're anything like me, I leave things lying around everywhere. Um, so it tends to happen quite often. And then you haven't screwed everything up. You don't have to run back into the studio to get it. Anyway, let's give it the old engine test now on the car. And then you'll be able to see the difference between using this. And there's no wind muff on this, by the way. I haven't put it on yet. Um, and using it on normal and things like that. We won't normally be bent over an engine wheel with it ticking over, doing vlogs and things like that. But it'd give it a real good test. See you in a sec.
Right, this is probably the best test to um, find out whether or not the mic's any good. We've got an engine noise on here, it's a great big V6 um, diesel engine on there, so plenty of noise with it rattling away. But um, you probably won't ever need to do it on that one, so if you can hear me with this on, then you know it's a bloody good mic. So let's get the engine started, see you in a sec. Now, one of the beauties is, even though I'm not on camera, we can start it up and you can still hear me. Now, I don't know if you can hear the engine or not, um, but walking around, and we'll get under the bay in a minute. So, there you go. Hopefully you can still hear me, and I'll do the little test, which is ABC, one, two, three. Hopefully you can hear me, and that'll be tickety-boo. Right, that should have given you enough information or enough stuff to make your own mind up, but let's get back to the studio, and I'll give you my final review on it. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze In the face of defeat, yeah Okay, now I've watched and listened to the footage, I think they've done an awesome job. And as I said, you can judge for yourself by listening to the audio as many times as you like, as I've taken it straight out of the camera with no post audio editing. I'm probably gonna do a comparison test, as I said, against the Rode Wireless Goes, because I took those with me as well. Now, my initial thoughts, I think they managed really well in the wind. And that small tip I gave you, well, that came from the awesome Sydney D. A link to his video is down below if you're interested in seeing how he come up with the idea of where you can put the lab mic so it's not seen, like this one here. So if you're interested, rather than me tell you, go and watch the master at it. But I'll give you a little clue. It involves toupee tape. We love you all. We want you safe. Get out of the storm's way. One of the things I like about these and the beauty of them is just like the wireless go. They are really tiny. They're versatile, like I showed you at the beginning. You're being able to film with multiple cameras and not have to worry about setting up the audio. Just go with the flow. And I've got some more reviews coming up over the next week or so. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified of when they're up. Now this giveaway, I've left it at the end basically to say thank you for actually watching the video right to the end. Because a lot of people, they'll click on, might get a bit bored, maybe with my dulcet tones, I don't know, and then they just bugger off. But if you save the end, you get the chance to win something. And this giveaway is going to be pretty exciting. What you get the chance of winning is either a Rode microphone or this Blue Ice Snowball USB microphone. And the details of both of these items will be down below if you want to check it out. But you do get the opportunity to choose which one you want. And it's really simple to win these. All you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel and leave a comment down below, like I always ask of how you will use it. And then what I'll do is pick one lucky winner in the next two weeks or so and announce it on the channel. Don't forget as well, if you've got any questions you want me to try certain setups, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully you found this useful and enjoyed watching it. Stay safe, having fun making stuff. Keep smiling as always, cheers and gone. Now, I know you've all been waiting for this, the winner of the Zyun SmoothX gimbal. Now, there were so many entries to this that I thought were worthy of it. Um, I couldn't actually pick one out like I normally do. So what I've done is I put all the names into the hat and they, these were all the names on there. As you can see, there's loads of them on there. Um, and then I randomly picked one out and the winner is Gomez. It's on its way to you. You might even have it by the time this video is out. And don't forget, everybody, if you weren't lucky enough to win it, there's a link down below that's got the best price on there. And I think there's even a discount on there for a short period of time. So hit that one and you'll find out. I wish I could have given more out to you all, but there are going to be some other giveaways coming soon. See you around. <laughs>